Let, let's go with Wilbur in New York. Uh, how you doing, Wilbur? You're on with Jenna and Matt. Hey, how's it going? Hello. I, I've got weird audio issues and video artifacting, um, but it says here you wanted to know what's the explanation for people experiencing the Holy Spirit. Yes. I used to be a Christian, and I used to like experience things. I used to roll around on the floor, speak in tongues, shake. Well, what do you think the explanation is? I don't know. I, I was like, there was one explanation. It's like being in a concert. Like, you feel off the music, the light, and the energy. And you just want to believe something so much that you make it real. Can, so can I speak from my experience? Yeah. Um, so I was a Catholic, and I don't know if all Catholics do this, but in my parish, we had what's called adoration, where it's kind of a time where everybody is silent, and what they say is the Eucharist, the body, the actual body of Christ is exposed. And this is like this huge thing, and it doesn't happen all the time. And so they put it in this gold thing and they carry it around and then they put it on the altar and then they leave it there. And sometimes it's for an hour. Sometimes it's all day. It kind of depends on what's going on. But the point of it is to be quiet and reverent and respect that Jesus is in the room and he's supposed to feel his presence. And what I will tell you is that I thought I did because I'd walk in and there's, it's eerie when you walk into a place that's normally uh, different and when it's completely altered, you know, when it's it just it just kind of felt weird, but but I kept yeah. going, and then I'm seeing everybody with their heads down, and I'm doing the same things. And what what happens is sometimes when you get quiet and you just kind of still your mind, you actually change your brain waves. And this is from what I've learned that that it just kind of creates a different feeling, um, kind of like a when I meditate um, I, for ten minutes or so. When I'm done, I feel like I took a 30 minute nap because I've, I've slowed down my brain waves enough to kind of feel different. And so that's what I think. Yeah, I was talking, to my, yeah, I was talking to my cousin about that. And he told me that people have been getting high like that since the beginning of, of the world, basically. Like with meditation, yeah. the Buddhist monks and all of that. Yeah. You think that's a real thing. I, and you can do it without God. Yeah, the the, yeah, the short yeah. answer to your question, <clears throat> what's the explanation for people fe experiencing the Holy Spirit is we don't know. But what we do know yeah. is that that quality of experience can be achieved in many different ways. And we know that it can be achieved from music, both secular and religious. And so mm -hmm. if there's music going on at the moment where people are experiencing it, maybe it's more likely that this is something that music does to people. Maybe it's more likely that this is something that being in a group of people who appear to be experiencing something does to people. There's a book from the, the 19th century called Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds that looks into this uh, from a lot of different experiences, you know, voodoo practitioners. And, and it, as far as I can tell, the thing when I was in church and everybody else around me was experiencing something and I was experiencing it too, you know, the elation, the goosebumps, the, the feeling of, of joy and everything else. Everybody around me was convinced that they were experiencing the Holy spirit. I had no, ex no explanation for this other than that. So I went with it, which is what I believe all the rest of them are doing. If you take a look at what's actually happening, we are, social creatures. We are impacted by a mu uh, music. We are impacted by community. We are impacted by um, authority figures. And, you know, how many times have you seen the uh, self-help gurus up on stage telling someone what they need to do to live their life? And how much better does it feel that, oh, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to sit here and think about it anymore. Somebody here is telling me what's going on. That makes you feel good. I have had some experiences that were similar to what I would describe as being filled with the Holy Ghost uh, from secular music, from art, yeah. from drugs, from sex, from really good meals. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you have all of those non-religious reasons for us to experience a certain type of thing, then it seems that if somebody wants to claim, no, 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 what's happening in church goes beyond these naturalistic explana explanations and is therefore necessarily the Holy Spirit, they have a whole bunch of work to do to prove that, and nobody's ever done it. Yeah. Yeah, I have a quick add... story of how I became an, like, an agnostic atheist. Um, 
Do you, do we have time for a story, Matt? We're actually out of time, and I just uh, let okay. the other callers know that we're going to have to stop. But I, I appreciate you, Wilbur. Thanks for for calling in. I'm sorry that we don't have a uh, a, a better Fine. explanation, but I think we're as close to the right track as as we're going to get now. But I do want to add right, real quick you. that that you had a really good answer about how it's it's different for everybody, and we've talked about this earlier that everybody's got different reasons for doing things. And so when you ask a very general question like why do theists believe in God? Or why do atheists not believe in God? It's 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 different, you know. It's different for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, thanks a lot for the call, Wilbur, and thanks to everybody else who called and the people who patiently waited only to get dropped in the queue right when we hit six o'clock. Uh, 